Hello, everyone. Welcome to a new lecture of our course on processing in memory systems. Today, we are going to talk about a recent paper of us, Transpin Leap, Efficient Transcendental Functions for Processing in Memory Systems. This work has been presented at ESPAS 2023, and at the bottom of the slide, you can find the link to the PDF and to the source code and also to a previous talk. Let's start with a brief executive summary. Processing in memory promises to alleviate the data movement bottleneck, as we know. However, current real-world processing in memory systems have very constrained hardware, and this limits the uh, variety in the instruction sets. So it's difficult or even impossible uh, to compute complex operations, for example, transcendental functions and other hard-to-calculate functions, such as the square root. These functions are important for modern workloads, and that's the case of activation functions in machine learning applications. Transpin Leap is the first library for transcendental functions and other hard to calculate functions on general purpose processing in memory systems. It uses cordic based and loop based methods for trigonometric functions, hyperbolic functions, exponentiation, logarithm, square root, etc. Transpin Leap is open source, and you can find a link uh, to the code in this slide. And we have implemented the first version of Transfing Leap for the admin PIM architecture, and we have evaluated its methods in terms of performance, accuracy, memory requirements, and setup times, and also with uh, three real-world workloads, Black Skull, Sigmoid, and Sogmax. So let's start with it. First of all, I'm going to provide a little bit of background on processing in memory and also on transcendental functions. Then we will talk about transferring leap and the different methods that we have implemented. And finally, we will go with the evaluation. Processing in memory systems, as we already know, is a computing paradigm that advocates for memory-centric computing systems where processing elements are placed near or inside the memory arrays. PIM is becoming a reality with AppMem, Samsung HVMP, Samsung AXD, SK Hynix AM, or Alibaba HP PNM that we have covered in this course. And these PIM systems have some common characteristics. The first one is that there is a host processor that has access to a standard main memory and PIM enabled memory. And the PIM enabled memory contains multiple PIM processing elements that have high bandwidth and low latency memory access. PIM uh, processing elements can only run at a few hundred megahertz, and they have a small number of registers and a small or no cache or scratch pad, and they need to communicate via the host processor. This is a picture of a state-of-the-art PIM system where you can identify the standard main memory, the PIM enabled memory with memory banks and PIM cores or PIM processing elements and the host processor. In our work, we use the admin PIM architecture that uses general purpose processing cores called DRAM processing units or DPUs. Each of them is fine-grained multi-threaded that can run up to 24 pin threads. And they support 32-bit integral arithmetic, but multiplication and addition are emulated as well as floating point operations. Each pin core has access to its own DRAM bank that is called NRAM and its own scratch pad that is called WRAM. Now the question is how to calculate transcendental functions in a PIN system. We can think about three different alternatives. In the first one, we would have a transcendental unit in the memory side near the PIN core or inside the PIN core. In that case, whenever we need to compute a transcendental function, we can offload the computation to the transcendental unit, compute, and then get back to the PIN core and continue the execution. But this is pretty unrealistic because, as we know, the area of the PIM units is very constrained and it's very unlikely that we can fit a transcendental unit. So the other alternative would be to stop the PIM kernel, move data that uh, we need to use to compute the transcendental functions to the CPU, compute the transcendental functions, and then return the result to the PIN kernel, to the PIN core, to continue with the execution. This is costly, for sure, in terms of data movement, because we have to return the control to the CPU, compute there, there and then move back to the PIN cores. So, and the third alternative is to implement the transcendental functions in software in the PIN core, and this way we have the opportunity of saving some time uh, thanks to avoiding data movement between the PIN core and the CPU back and forth. So this third alternative is Transpin Leap, an open source library with cordic and loop based methods for trigonometric functions, hyperbolic functions, exponentiation, logarithm, square root, etc. So let's talk about uh, Transpin Leap. 
TransfinLib uses uh, various methods uh, for implementation of transcendental functions. We already know that there are Taylor approximation, minimax po uh, polynomials, Cordic and Lutz. In TransfinLib, we use Cordic and Lutz. Cordic is an iterative method that uses bit shifts, additions, and lookup tables. And in its rotation mode, Cordic computes a function value for an input by rotating a vector iteratively. And this rotation is done by multiplying the vector and a matrix, and the matrix represents a rotation angle that decreases in each iteration. The other alternative in transpin leap are the FATSI lookup tables, and they return an approximate output for each input x. We need an address function that returns the address, that, that the index, to access the lookup table. And that's uh, and the table will return for each x will return the corresponding entry of the table. To generate the lookup table, we also need a helper function that is kind of the inverse of the uh, address function. And and when we using lookup tables, we can improve the accuracy by using interpolation. In this case, we will need to access two elements of the lookup tables, two entries of the lookup tables, and perform. Uh, one multiplication, but we can significantly improve the accuracy. About the cordic uh, based methods, in TranspingLib, we use cordic implementations of trigonometric, hyperbolic functions, exponentiation, logarithm, and square root. As an example, let's take a look at the sine function. So in the sine function, the first thing that we will do is uh, range reduction in order to make sure that the input is between 0 and 2 pi, because that's a range of inputs that gives us uh, all possible outputs. And then we have to perform a conversion from floating point to fixed point, which is what is natively supported by the pin system that we are using in this work. Uh, next thing is to identify what's the quadrant, because in the sine uh, function, we have exactly the same values between 0 and 90 degrees, on other 0 and pi over 2, and the rest of quadrants. It's only that we have to take into account the quadrant later. Then we apply the cordic algorithm, and we obtain the output and then based on the quadrant, we uh, obtain the final result for the same function. And finally, we convert back from fixed point to floating point. Regarding the loot based methods, we have different alternatives. The first one is called multiplication based loot or M loot. In this case, uh, the lookup table has regular spacing between table entries, and this is how the address function looks, where k represents the loop density and p defines what's the um, input value that corresponds to address zero of the loop. Uh, for example, if we have to, if we want to map the interval 0, 5 to a 12th entry lookup table, um, the density with respect to the input will look like this. We have a density value k that is equal to 2.4. However, multiplication is very expensive in the admin PIM architecture, and that's why we are looking for other methods that are more efficient, that are faster. And this is the case of the LDX-based LUT, or LDUT, where the multiplication is replaced by a multiplication by a power of two. And this way, instead of multiplying, we, we can just shift. But to do so, we have to implement, or we have implemented this LDX uh, operation uh, function that performs um, this uh, multiplication by a power of two. And, um, and this is how the address function looks. Now k is a power of 2. And this results in less precision, but avoids multiplication. As you can see uh, here in the figure, now the density is 2 instead of 2.4, as in the previous example. Uh, the third possibility that we have is called direct float conversion uh, based lookup table. And uh, it takes advantage of the natural, natural non-linearity of the floating point format. In this case, the address is the composed of the last m bits of the exponent and the p bits and p bits of the mantissa. And um, this results in a piecewise linear density with two to the n steps of two to the p addresses. The, the, the density versus input uh, function will look like this. Observe that one problem that this uh, dilute version has is that there is this gap between zero and one. So that's why we are proposing some combined methods. For example, the direct float conversion plus LDX based lookup table or DL loot. In this case, we use a lookup table, an L loot uh, between zero and the smallest exponent, uh, 
um, and um, a D loot for larger inputs. And that's why the density over input function looks like this. Now we have solved the problem of this gap between zero and one. The other combined methods is called Cordic plus LDUT. And in this case, we replace the first few iterations of Cordic uh, with a lookup table. Uh, this Cordic plus LDUT offers a flexible trade-off between computing cost, table size, and precision, as we will see in our evaluation. Uh, some uh, supported functions, or what are the supported functions in the current version of, of transfer leap are all these ones that you can see um, in the table. Uh, based on our preliminary analysis, we have provided the most suitable methods for each of the supported functions. Um, in our evaluation, we are going to use sign as a representative function. We implemented uh, all the methods for sign, as you can see in the table. Okay, now let's go with the evaluation. First of all, evaluated systems, an app and pin system with more than 2,500 pin cores, and uh, as a baseline, a dual socket Intel Xeon CPU. Uh, we create first microbenchmarks for performance evaluation, where we measure the execution cycles of the uh, transcendental or the um, uh, transferring leap functions. Um, well, accuracy evaluation, in this case, we use the root mean square absolute error with respect to the CPU using the standard math library. The setup time, that is the uh, time that we need to generate, for example, lookup tables in the uh, host CPU and then transform them to the pin side, and the memory consumption. In this case, uh, we are counting for all tables and variables that are allocated in the DRAM bank of a pin core. As I said uh, before, we are going to use sign as a representative function, but we will also see our evaluation with real-world benchmarks uh, with black, black skulls that uses exponentiation, logarithm, square root, and the cumulative normal uh, distribution that uh, we are also implemented in transfer leap. Uh, we also use sigmoid and softmax. So let's just start with the microbenchmark results and the performance results. Uh, one uh, first thing to take into account is that we are measuring the execution cycles for an accuracy range between two to the, uh, 10 to the minus fourth and um, 10 to the minus ninth. And uh, as we will see, the lookup table versions can place the lookup table either in the pin course, DRAM bank, or in the scratch pad. In these plots, you can see execution cycles over the root mean square absolute error. And uh, as you can see, for each of the different methods or loop-based uh, methods, there are two lines. One is the solid line when the uh, lookup table is stored in the DRAM bank, and the other one is the dotted line when the lookup table is stored in the WRAM. So let's take a look at the observations. First of all, the performance of loop-based methods is independent of the accuracy. It only depends on what's the size of the um, lookup table, and um, the performance of um, the function itself is going to be the uh, time, it's going to be imposed by the time that we need to access the table uh, in, in MRAM or in WRAM, but it's independent of the size of this table. However, the execution cycles of the different loop-based versions depend on the number of multiplications. For example, the interpolated MLOOT version uses two floating point multiplications, the non-interpolated MLOOT and the interpolated RLOOT use one floating point multiplication and the non-interpolated L loot uses no floating point multiplication. And that's why it's the fastest, even though the error might be uh, higher as well. Uh, then we also have a fixed point version of the L loot. In this case, it doubles the performance of the uh, interpolated L loot because the uh, fixed point multiplication, integral multiplication is faster than the floating point multiplication. Now, observations with respect to the cordic based methods. Um, uh, in this case, um, we will observe that we take more execution cycles to provide higher accuracy because cordic is iterative. So we need more iterations for higher accuracy. And that's what we indeed observe in these uh, blue line and red lines in the plot. And we also observe that cordic plus loot runs faster than cordic because it replaces the initial iterations with a, a L loot query. And we also observe that at some point, around 10 to the minus 9, increasing the loot size or the core iterations doesn't really improve the accuracy, but that's basically limited by the uh, precision of the floating point format itself. Another observation with respect to the lookup tables is that we see little benefit from placing the lookup tables in the scratch, but instead of the uh, MRAM or the DRAM bank. Uh, so this means that 
as a general rule, it makes sense to just keep the lookup tables in the uh, DRAM bank because the WRAM, the scratchpad, might be uh, useful for uh, operands. So key takeaway number four, number one is that interpolated LLOOP methods, lookup table with the LDX operation offer the best trade-offs in terms of performance and accuracy as we have just seen in the previous plot. Now let's take a look at the setup time, and these can also uh, impact the decision of what method to use, because depending on the method, we will need more setup time in the host or less. So the first observation is that for loot-based methods, the setup time increases with the loot size. That's basically because we have to populate a larger loot in the host and then transfer a larger loot uh, to the PIM side, to the memory side. Another observation is that this doesn't happen for cordic methods. They have flat setup times. So um, uh, the observation as well is that cordic methods can provide higher overall performance, meaning the sum of uh, a setup time and, P and pin kernel time than the loose based methods uh, when the total of uh, number of transcendental functions in a workload is low, meaning that the loot based methods won't be able to amortize the cost of the setup time. We have some analysis about this in the paper. So key takeaway number two is that cordic based methods are preferable when a pin kernel needs to execute just a few transcendental functions due to their lower setup time in the host CPU. With respect to memory, we also obtain the memory consumption in bytes um, uh, in the DRAM bank of a pin core. And this is how the memory consumption looks with respect to the root mean square absolute error. First observation is that the accuracy of the non-interpolated loot methods is limited by the available memory. Another observation is that the memory consumption of the quartic methods does not increase exponentially, as is the case of the loot-based methods. And um, one last observation here is that the interpolation is an effective way of uh, increasing accuracy without increasing loot size that much, as we um, uh, can see uh, in, for, for these um, lines here. So key takeaway number three, interpolated LDOOT methods offer good trade-off in terms of accuracy, execution cycles, and memory consumption. However, CORDIC and CORDIC plus LDOOT methods are recommended for applications that require higher accuracy where the available memory is limited. For example, because the memory, the NRAM uh, size or the DRAM bank is needed for large data sets. There are other supported functions, not others, not only sign. Uh, and the general trends for these other functions are very similar to those of the sign operation, the sign function. There are some major differences. First of all, for tangent calculation, it's going to take around two or three times more cycles than the sign calculation. But that's because it requires, first of all, the calculation of the sign and the consign, <clears throat> and then a floating point division. Another major difference is that some supported functions require range reduction and or range extension. And the cost of these uh, reduction or extension of the range um, differs between functions because it depends on the specific mathematical identities that we use for the conversion. Here in the plot, uh, you can see the execution cycles for the range uh, reduction and extension of uh, some of the supported functions. However, good thing is that this range reduction or extension is not only necessary and that only um, depends on the actual range of input values. So um, we may not need to use uh, this uh, costly reduction or extension in many, many cases. Another major difference is that for activation functions such as uh, hyperbolic tangent and GELU, uh, we do not require range reduction and extension and they are approximately linear in most parts. These um, two characteristics make that the loot and the loot methods are well suited for these activation functions. And the good thing of these two methods is that they are faster than interpolated L loot um, while providing similar accuracy. So these uh, two methods are very much recommended for activation functions. Now let's take a look at the results with uh, real world benchmarks. We have two baselines. TPU cores, either one or 32, but we also have a pin baseline that is using a, a polynomial approximation. 
And these are the results for black skulls. One thing that we can observe is that uh, transpin leap for black skulls uh, uh, makes uh, the PIM implementation between five and 12 times faster than the PIM baseline. And another observation is that the fixed point L loop is 92% uh, faster than the 32 thread CPU baseline. With regards to um, sigmoid and submax, um, we see that the 32 cores, the 32 CPU cores, might be faster than the implementation using uh, transpin leap, but transpin leap is significantly faster than the uh, PIN baseline. And also, one thing to take into account as well is that transpin leap can save the data movement from executing the activation functions in the host CPU, as we observed in the beginning of this presentation. So. Takeaway number five is that transpin leap can reduce data movement from PIM cores to the CPU for applications running on the PIM cores. And as a result, the execution time of um, transcendental functions can be uh, between six and eight times shorter than the execution time of these transcendental functions in the host CPU. And these um, are our estimations that we have uh, in our paper. You can find more detail in our papers, more background, how to use uh, the transpin leap APIs and additional observations and takeaways. Um, this is the archive version that is uh, publicly available. And this is the ESPAS 23, the 2023 version. And as I said earlier, the, it's uh, open source. Transpin leap is available in our repository. To conclude, again, the executive summary, Processing in memory is very promising to alleviate the data movement bottleneck. However, current real world processing in memory systems have very constrained hardware, and this limits the instruction sets and makes very difficult or even impossible to implement some um, uh, or to use some uh, specific operations such as transcendental functions or a square root. And these functions are important in modern workloads and that's the case of activation functions in machine learning applications. So transpin leap is the first library for transcendental and other how to calculate functions on general purpose PIM cores. It uses cordic based and loop based methods and it's uh, publicly available, it's open source. Uh, we have implemented the first version of transpin leap for the admin PIM architecture and have evaluated its methods in terms of performance, accuracy, memory requirements, and set of time, and also using three real world workloads. This is all for today. If you have any questions about the lecture, if you have any questions about transpin leap, please uh, contact me. I would be glad to help, and I hope to see you in the next lecture of or for PIM course. Thank you very much for your attention.